Hello everyone, I'm Reza Red and today I'm going to show you uh, what are custom functions in Power Query and how they can be useful in doing uh, a work that you want to do across multiple data sources which has the same structure like creating loop structure, going through the multiple files, going through multiple tables and importing the same data structure with uh, one single source of code. Let's go and check it out. To show you how custom function works, I'm going to uh, show you that through an example. The example I'm going to show you is uh, through this uh, website. This is a website, officeholidays.com uh, is a website that actually uh, shows you public holidays of uh, most of the countries. Uh, it's not, uh, let's say, um, a government website to make sure that these are all correct. So some public holidays dates here might be incorrect. Uh, I don't say this is good to use in your production environment, but it's a good um, example to use for our demo. Let's check it out. So I'm going to countries. Under all countries, I can go and select the country that I want. I'm doing it for New Zealand. Uh, to find public holidays over there, you can do that for your United States or for any other countries you want. Uh, when I select the country, I'll see public holidays of that country and then uh, I can switch between years. This is for the current year, for 2019, I can change it to 18, 20. Uh, if I have different regions and states in my country, I can choose between those to see public holidays specifically for those areas. Uh, for this example, I'm going to just another year, let's say 2018. Uh, and this shows me the public holidays of 2018. And as you can see in the URL, it also has 2018 as part of that URL. Now I can copy this URL. And when you copy that, make sure that you have the year as part of it somewhere. If you don't go and change a uh, year to, some, uh, to another year, then you will see the year comes up as part of the URL. I'll copy this uh, URL. I'll go to the Power BI desktop, start with get data from web and paste it here. Uh, this will scan that URL and find all pages, uh, all actually uh, HTML codes and come up with suggested tables or HTML tables that you can choose from. Now, custom function is not just for uh, web pages or things like that. It can be applied everywhere. The example I'm showing you to you is based on a web page, but you can do it in any other types of pages as well. Now, uh, I have a number of tables here fetched and uh, they have all kind of different uh, data from that page. The one that I want here in, in my example is table three. In your example, it might be another table. I'll select that table. This is the public holidays of 2018, as you can see here, right? I'll see this information and then I can go and click on edit. This will come up with uh, the preview of data uh, for that period. You see, I have different columns, column one, two, three, four, five, and the dates. Uh, I have two separate dates. Not sure why it came up with two separate dates, probably because that uh, there is a column behind this, which is hidden. I don't see that column, but that column is part of this anyway. Uh, so let's say these are our public holidays, right? Uh, and you might want to apply some transformations on this as well, but I'll keep it without any transformations at this stage. Now I want to go through every single one of these years and, uh, and get the public holidays of that year as well. But instead of me coming to Power Query, doing a duplicate or copy of this query every time, going to source and changing it to a different URL, what I will do is I will create a function from this process. My function would be getting uh, the year as the input and providing the um, table, this table, as the output, public holidays of that year, right? So in order to create that function, I need two elements. I need a parameter, and I need a query that gets that parameter produce the output. So let's start with parameter. I'll go to the home tab under manage parameters. I can create a new parameter. I'm going to call this year. 
The data type of year should be number. However, uh, if I look uh, more in details that where I'm going to use that year value, I see that I'm going to use it inside a URL. And that URL is a text value, right? So if I'm going to use it inside the text value, it's better to be the data type of text because otherwise I have to do one um, date type com uh, data type conversion as well. So I'll set it as text. I'll set current value as 2018. That's just the uh, default value. Doesn't, doesn't matter because we are going to change it. Um, so year text 2018. I click on OK and then the parameter will be added here. Right, so this is my year parameter. This is the value of that. Uh, if you want to change the parameter, this is how you change it, 2019. Press enter, 2020, press enter. Right now, when I do these changes, uh, it won't impact anything because uh, this parameter is not used anywhere, right? So let's go and use it in somewhere. Table three, which is the table that I used for getting these public holidays, has a step, source step, and that source step has a setting icon, and that is where we have the URL of that source. So you see, this is the URL of that page. It has 2018 in it. This is the part that I need to change with that parameter. I can go ahead and change it into in advanced editor with the query, with the scripting, uh, but this even made it much easier. If you click on this advanced tab, you can do this even here without touching the script. So go to the advanced tab, you'll see uh, URL parts and you'll see the URL preview. These parts, uh, you can break your URL into multiple parts and you'll see the preview down at the bottom. At the moment, it's just one part. I'm getting 2018.php, I mean 2018 and everything after that, the year and everything after that, I'll cut that and I'll paste it in the second part. I would still have the same preview because it's just break into two parts. Then I'll add a third part, which is everything after the year, everything after 2018. I'll cut that and I'll paste it here as a third part. And still I have the same preview, right? So it, it didn't actually change anything at all. It just break into three parts with the same output so far. Now, the reason to break it into three parts was that now I'm going to change this part, which is the year, with a parameter. If you have more multiple parameters, if you have year and state and other things, then you need to break it into even more parts than three. I'll change this ABC to parameter. And it already picks the year because that's the only parameter that I have. If it doesn't show you the parameter that you've created, the reason is probably because your parameter is not a text data type. So I'll select the parameter and then click OK. Now, if I go to the last step, still I'll see 2018's information uh, because parameter value is 2018. If I come here and change it to 2019, this now shows me 2019 public holidays. If I go ahead and click on 2015, this would be public holidays of 2015. It will take some time for some of these because it's just query that website again and again. So now you see this is public holidays of 2015. So I've managed to create a parameter and make my query a parametric query that gets the parameter value, produce the output, right? Now this query is a good candidate to be a function because this query accept a parameter, accept an input, produce an output, right? But it's not a function, it's still a query. To convert a query to function, right click on that query and click on create function, right? Create function. Uh, it already knows that I have a parameter input for that, it's year, and I just put the function name. So let's say the function name is get holidays. Click OK. Now, when you create a function, a number of changes happens. This is uh, those changes. First, there will be a folder with the name of your function. Under that folder, you'll see three items, the, the parameter used, the query used in that function and the function itself, right? You can go and change the query if you want as well, uh, uh, but how the function itself works. The function itself uh, has uh, an input value and it can provide an output, 
and you can test it here. Like for example, let's say I want to call this function for year 2020, invoke. Whenever you invoke, there will be a new query added here with the result of invoking that function with one single step only. And that single step is calling this function. You see, it's equal to get holidays 2020 and get holidays is this function. If I change it to call it for 2010, this would call for 2010 and public holidays of 2010 would come, right? Now, still, this is kind of static process. I have to go to every single year and call this one by one, right? But I managed to create the function, right? Now, I'm going to show you a place that you can use this function to make even your, um, even your uh, Power Query uh, implementation more dynamic. If I have a list of these input values, like 2010, 2011, 2020, if I have a list of all of these, then I can call this function, I can invoke this function for every one of those. So let's go ahead and create a list. This list is also something that you can fetch from this page itself, but let's not talk about that. Let's just do it uh, statically here. Uh, so I'll create a new query, a new blank query. A blank query is a query that doesn't have any anything in it, it's blank basically. Uh, and I'm going to use a formula here. If you don't see this formula bar, you go ahead in view tab and check the formula bar, you'll see that. Uh, I'll put equal sign, uh, bracket, this type of bracket, 2010 dot dot 2020. This is saying that the start from 2010 to 2020, one at a time, and this will generate a list like this. Right. There are lots of different ways of creating a list. This is just one of those. Uh, so now I have a list of values that I can use as the input of that function. Right. Uh, by the way, I can remove this invoked function. I don't need that because that was just the test. So I'll remove the invoked function, not the function itself, the invoke function. Okay. Now in this query, I have a list of all of these um, years. Uh, because I'm going to call it for every one of those years and get the output right beside it, I need to change this to a table. A list is just a single column structure. In the list tools transform, I click on convert to table and I'll leave it as the default configuration. Click on OK. Now this column one is only one column of a table. You see this is a table. Uh, because the parameter of that uh, function is a text parameter, the data type of that is text, we need to make sure that this is also a text. I'll change this data type to text. And now we are ready to invoke that function. Now to invoke that function for every single value in this uh, column, we'll do it this way. I'll go to add column, invoke custom function, then you'll see a section here that you can choose what function you want. I'll choose function query, which is get holidays. That's the function that we have over there. Um, this can get the input from a value, from a column. We want this to be a column and we want this to be a column one. Everything is already defined there. And the column name, the new column name, let's call it holidays. So in this part, the important part is function query and the input parameters, right? So after doing that, click on OK. Now this will take some time because it will go through every one of those years and load the output um, here. And at the bottom section, you'll see uh, a place that it shows you how many rows loaded. Depends on internet connection, depends on how busy that website is, depends on response time of that website, it might take some time. Um, and it will uh, work like a web scrapper, will go through every one of those years and populate those information. Now, this is not just for a web address, this can be uh, files in a folder, this can be multiple sheets in one Excel file. This can be emails in uh, multiple emails in one place. This can be all types of structures, uh, multiple tables in a, a database, multiple databases in a um, server, things like that. And it will come up like this. So now you see we have a table 
under each year and if I click not on the table, if I click somewhere blank in here, it'll show me the preview of that. So this is for 2010, 2014, 2017, 2020. I have all public holidays of all years in one place. I don't need the first column any anymore here. Uh, that's the beauty of using Power Query because Power Query is a step-by-step -step transformation. We needed it for a previous step. We don't need it anymore. I'll remove that column. And then this holidays column, I'll go and expand it. I should have had better column names, but let's leave it for now. I'll expand it, click OK. Now we have public holidays of 2010 all the way to 2020. If I want to clean up this data, I can do this clean up here, like for example, removing these two extra columns. Uh, calling this column date column, changing it to be data type date, calling this column public holidays, and uh, calling this column comments. I can do this either here or even in the table three uh, query over there. Now I have one query that has everything in it. Uh, custom functions and parameters are useful for building a scenario that, uh, that actually helps you with uh, looping through a number of sources, applying same number of transformations uh, and uh, getting the output of that all combined. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, Stay tuned for more Power BI and AI videos. Thank you.